Coming up, we're gonna talk all about push notifications and the five best practices that you need to implement to increase your app engagement and more importantly, your revenue. Stay tuned. What is up, App Nation? It is Steve P. Young, founder of AppMasters.com, the place you go when you want action-packed content to help you grow your app downloads and, like I said before, your revenues. So today, we're gonna talk all about push notifications and the five best practices that I've found to help you increase your app engagement and your monetization. So let's get started. Push notifications. Number one, ask for your push notification prompt during the onboarding process. I'm gonna give you some examples of this. Genie, a chat GBT app, super popular. You can see their onboarding sequence. Your AI assistant, they're asking for ATT prompt. Then they say your AI assistant. They even ask you for a review. And then they say, hey, enable notifications. I really like the messaging here. Allow us to send notifications so you wouldn't miss a thing. And then they show you with the pop-up. So they have it during the onboarding process. Now we know that most people who buy, buy during the onboarding process. During the onboarding process is when we have the best opportunity to get our users to opt into these push and get them to eventually convert. And you can see towards the end of the onboarding flows, if you're not familiar with onboarding flows, it's just the initial screens that users see right after they open your app for the very first time. And you can see the best practices is also to show your pricing page or your paywall during that onboarding process. So you wanna ask for your push notification and also show your paywall. Number two, just ask for it. All right, I know I've seen, I was wrong about this. So here's an A-B test from a previous YouTube guest, William from Wager Lab, and he A-B tested this because he said, Steve, I've been following your advice and I've been doing it B. And so I tested it versus A because a lot of people in the industry were saying B is the best way to go. And if you're just listening to this, go watch the YouTube video, but you'll see the visual. But B says, don't miss a beat. We'll tell you when you win or lose your wagers and when you receive new ones. Enable notifications, you tap that. Now, obviously you can X out of B, which if you look at the genie, you can't X out versus A where you just ask for it. And William saw a 4.8 increase in push notification prompts, people who enabled it by just asking for it. And so here's the proof. So I think you could just ask for it. I really like how Genie does it and says, hey, you know, please enable it. And then when you hit continue, it'll ask. Now here's another app, Be Real, very popular app, right? Here's their onboarding flow. They ask you for contacts, which on the very first screen, not too bad. We've actually seen pretty good engagement when you ask for these type of information, what you might think sensitive in the very beginning, because it does help increase that user engagement. And then when to post on Be Real, the only way to know when to post to be real is to enable the notifications. Like pretty obvious and like, hey, here's what you're about to see. So hit enable, please, right? And then when I hit next, hit allow right here, they then hit me with the push notification. Now watch this, okay? So if I hit don't allow, which I personally do most of the time, it hits me with this screen. Be real is way better with notifications. The only way to know when to post a be real is to enable the notifications. And I can go into the open settings. Okay, and then you can obviously go to the next step, but they try to force you to do that as well. That's what the app is all about. And so they really want you to enable these notifications. Now, if I hit allow, watch this. You get a screen that shows you a sample push notification. Absolutely love this, by the way. This is how Be Real will notify you when you can capture and post. So click on the notification to take your very first Be Real. Now, what if I don't click on it, <laughs> all right? They say, that was close, Steve. Let's try it again. I hit reset notification. It then forces me to hit that push notification and then take me to the normal screen and to capture my first B. Really cool, really a great way to teach your user and train your user what you as the app owner really want them to do. Let's move on to the next topic. Next one is number three, and it's the frequency of the push notification. Super important. Now, net net. The more you send, the more ineffective it becomes. So another way to phrase it is the less you send, the more effective it becomes as well. Shout out to Nautix who sponsored this video. And if you're looking for a push and web notification platform that's gonna seamlessly integrate with your existing platform, go check them out. It is Nautix.co. That's N-O-T-I-X.co. And guess what? You can keep your normal push notification provider and still test out Nautix. 
here we go with the push notification frequency they said you want to ideally you can look at it by different categories but ideally about one or two is pretty good and that's about per day right about one or two per day is good timely push notifications are the best but if you have to send something out one or two is pretty good for making sure you get your optimal click-through rates. So people who get a push to actually eventually open that push notification. And I'm going to link to a blog post that they wrote where it has way more data on the average click-through rates by industry and some of the other best practices. I'm just covering a few of my own. All right. Number four, it's all about messaging. That's what it is. All right. Now that you figure out the frequency, now that you get them to engage, it's all about what you're saying to them. That makes a huge difference. Now, again, According to Nautics, you want to use emojis. Makes sense. You want to try to personalize your push notification messaging and using emojis certainly helps. You can see 3% click-through rate without emojis, 3.5 with emojis. You want to be A-B testing a lot of your click-throughs. And then <laughs> less is more, people. Less is more. All right. The average number of words, okay? If it's 10 or fewer, you're getting a 9% click-through rate versus 11 to 20 gets a 5% click-through rate and 21 or more words gets a 3.5% click-through rate, all right? So less is more, okay? Say less, do more, get it timely. Now, my favorite topic, monetization. Best practices for monetization, okay? This is a previous podcast guest. She wrote a blog post about this, Morella Chile, and she talked about how when she was working for Zinio, it's an online magazine platform, but this was there before. Okay, so when people within the app abandon carts, so you can check out for different magazines that you want to buy digitally. Okay, when people abandon that cart and added that magazine, said, ah, no, I don't want it anymore, and they just close out the app or they're just left for whatever reason, they would send them a push notification reminder one hour within that first hour. Then they wait a couple of days and then they sent another reminder. But they found out through some A B testing that the optimal way of doing it was three push notifications. So first reminder set within that first hour, okay? After you leave that card abandonment. Second reminder, one day after. And then the third reminder was about one week later. Now, I love this because it shows you, you gotta be super aggressive. If they've showed intent, if users have showed intent, one, they downloaded your app, that's intent. And two, they added something to the cart and they said, I want this, but they left for some reason, right? Maybe they had to pick up the kids. It doesn't mean that they left because they didn't want it anymore. It could have been just something else, okay? Reminding them very aggressively <laughs> helps out, okay? So they saw a 13X increase in conversions when moving from two push notifications to three, all right? That second one, both had that one within that first hour, but the first version waited a couple of days, whereas the second version reminded them the day after and then a week after. Like, hey, just in case you forgot. Okay, wait, there's more. Now, I firmly believe that within that first hour of somebody downloading your app, if they did not activate that trial, you should give them an offer or something to bring them back in. Here's an app that I just checked out. You can see this is their email. I know it's a little bit different from push, but I think the same philosophy applies here. So again, welcome email. And I just blocked out everything. This is brand new, June 16th. And then it says, unlock all pro recipes, 20% off today. Hey. So that was literally the second email and it almost happened at almost the same time. So they welcomed me and said, hey, you wanna buy something? Now I didn't buy within the app, but it shows you that you can use multiple channels to try to get users to engage. And I love the aggressiveness of it because what we found in our data is that people who buy generally buy within that first 20 minute to hour of downloading your app and opening your app. So I love the aggressiveness here. And then when I click into this email, unlock all pro recipes and I check out, guess where it sends me? A Stripe landing page. Super easy to implement, especially for you guys on the back end. Really easy. That shows you that you should do that. Now with push notifications, here's shout out to you, Masood, somebody who within my community, he tested this. So if somebody canceled a trial, okay, you activated a trial and then you cancel it, you as a developer or your developer knows when that trial has been canceled. Apple and Google will both tell you. So Masu decided to send a push notification, said, hey, come back and save. Open the app and save 50% off your next subscription. This offer is only available for a limited time. So act fast. Here is after you click on that push notification. 
here's the page that he sends you. Okay, so it gives you 50% off. Now, on this offer, remember, these are people who activated trial and canceled the trial. You do not need to offer any more trials. This 50% off should not have a trial anymore because when somebody activates a trial into paying you, that percentage, the highest I've seen is like 66%. It's never gonna be 100%, I promise you. So when you're giving any type of discounts, make sure you remove all trials from this discount. And now he's starting to see revenues come in through this push notification. Lastly, I wanna highlight this. So shout out to William, who I shared another strategy about cart abandonment with, but I just love the messaging that he has for this. So William says, secret offer unlocked, only 40 bucks a year, you save 66% off this deal. I would leverage this, whether people close that first paywall or send them a push notification to bring them back in to the app. And I would be super aggressive. I would almost say a cart abandonment for a subscription app is someone who downloads your app, sees your paywall and decides not to enable that trial. Within that first hour, give them an offer to come back into the app and activate that subscription. All right, guys, I do want to thank my sponsor for this video, Nautics.co, Nautics.co. They're going to do desktop, mobile, and in-app push notifications for you to help you increase your app engagement and web views. So if you've got a website, you've got a component already, you can do it all in one platform. And the best thing is you don't have to switch your provider. You can use your current provider, wherever that may be, and then try out Nautics at the same time because they're so confident in their platform. They're going to say, yo, you're going to love us so much that you're going to want to switch after you started testing us out. And you can do that for absolutely free. Just let them know you heard it on this very podcast. You say, yo, Nautics, I heard you from Steve from Matt Masters. Hook me up and they will do just that. So once again, go to Nautics, N-O-T-I-X, not I-X, not ticks. Dot co, not ticks, dot co for all your web and app push notification needs. All right, guys, till next time, see you on the next video.